hello everybody welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first modding tutorial we're going to start with the basics for those who are new and for those who are converting from 19 to 22 so we're going to start with the moddesk xml now i have prepared an example of a moddesk xml that it's going to be my template for all my mods in fs22 we have it here and we're going to review the several sections along all of it Let's start from the beginning. This section here cannot be touched. This is an XML generated and that always needs to be here and it cannot be touched. Basic of a mod in FS19, 17, 15 and now in 22 is the mod desk and his desk version. Here I have it set it to 60. That's going to be the basic on 62 and with the new patches that the game that the game has this is going to be increased along with the game right now how do i know what is the latest version of the game how do i check it that is a very very easy way and i'm going to show it off first you need to be on pc and you need to be a little bit familiar on how pc files are organized we're going to open an explorer and we are going to go to documents this is a path that you're going to look for. You're going to look for your user, documents, my games, and Farming Simulator 22. Now in here, there is a bunch of stuff that you don't need to touch. You only need to go and check a file that it's called a log file. I'm going to open it. And in this log file, this is going to tell me everything that the game is reading and it's going to be based off. You need to look for a specific line. And right here, what it says, Farming Simulator 22 version, blah, 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 available languages, language active, time. And it says here, Mod Desk version 62. It means that the version that I have on my computer is going to be using Mod, ver mod Desk version 62. Now, next line in the Moddesk XML is the author who created it. In this case, well, you know, it's going to be me, so it's going to be 82 Studio. Then we have the contributors tag. You can have them here if somebody helped you, if there is a team of people actually working, you can set them here. Then the version. In order to send a mod to the mod, to the mod hub, it needs to be the first one, the first time you submit it, it needs to be version 1.0.0.0. If you don't have it there, it's not going to be accepted in the Mod Hub. Now the title. The title contains a structure that organizes the different languages that this mod is going to be translated to. In this case, in this example, I'm using English, tag like this, EN at the beginning, EN at the end, with the closing sign, the closing sign here, and also I'm using Spanish. Then the translation, and then the closure. We have a similar section with the description. In here, you have also opening and closing for the language of the text that is going to be displayed here. Now, in this C data section, you can type the text that you want to appear in the mod hub as a description of your mod. There is some restrictions here and, and things that you cannot do. For example, you cannot add special characters, especially at the beginning. And each line must start in the very beginning at the left without tabs or spaces. Now we move into the translation section or also known as the localization of the mod. The additional actions or configurations that you set up inside your mod that are not included in the game, like for an example, you see here configuration bumpers or configuration chicken lights, then these two options do not exist. They don't exist inside, inside the base game. So you need to define them and also translate them. There is two ways of making it. In this case, if you have only two translations, two options to translate, you can do them here in the mod desk inside the tag L10N. And it opens here and it closes here. It has this structure where you can tap in 
This section, starting with text, name as a keyword, equal, opening quota, your configuration setup, your configuration text, doesn't matter what you said, and important to be configuration underscore and then the option, and then closing the quota. Inside the structure text, you're going to set up the different translations. In this case, I have in English bumpers and in Deutsch, in, in German, that word that I'm not going to pronounce. Same, I'm replicating the same here for the chicken lights. Same structure, text, name, code in the two translations. Now, imagine that your mod has a lot of new options. For example, the Phoenix. The Phoenix has a lot of options. So instead of typing everything here and having a huge, huge, huge mod desk, you can use references to an internal file that you are going to localize inside your mod. In this case, I'm localizing the L10N section into a file name prefix and it's going to be found into the folder translations L10N. The structure of this file is different. We're not going to structure it like that and we're going to structure as follow. This is how a translation file is structured. We have the same here. We have the L10N tag at the beginning. Then we have the translation contributors it's going to be me in case somebody helps for example I've had, I've got help for the German translations it's nice to to mention them here and then you start listing all the different configurations and their translation which one right now just pay attention to the name the name of the file is l10n underscore en dot xml that gives me the English translations for every single one of these values now in this case, the Phoenix is a complex mod. It has a lot of options for you to choose. And these are all the translations that we have to do to it. If we have to organize that into the XML, into the mod desk XML, it'll make a huge mod desk XML and hard to handle. In this way, we can actually handle the translations in an easier way and we can organize them better and in a most, in a most clear way. Same happen with the German translations. We have the L10N underscore DE just up here. And this is how it's organized. Everything is got to be the same, but the text definition is going to be different and it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to include the one that it's for the language that you are declaring in the name of the file. The next section is the icon file name. In the icon file name, we're going to specify the icon that is going to be shown in the list of mods to be active, not in the store. This is the, this is the icon that identifies the mod. So for an example, if it's going to be a pack, this mod icon DDS is going to contain the three, four, five images, very, very small. There is some restrictions and the right way to create the mod icon DDS. And this is going to be covered in a separate video. Now the tag for multiplayer. It should be always true. I know that there is something extra in FS22. In FS22, there is an additional parameter that we can set up here in the multiplayer tag to make it work only on a multiplayer session. I really don't see the benefit of it right now. It might be something very useful in the future to prevent some mods to be used in a single player. We'll see that within time. The next section is the store items. This section includes all the items that you are going to show that are included in your mod and that you want to be shown, to be displayed in the store. In this case, we only have the Phoenix Winterwolf XML and this is the only mod that is going to appear in the store. Now, if I want to include, for example, the spreader, I'm going to duplicate this line. If you are using Notepad++, sorry, um, Control D duplicates the line. Now, I know that I have my spreader in a folder that it's named Attachments and I know that it's named Heavy Duty Spreader. Now, in the store, 
they are two mods that are going to appear. First, the Phoenix Winter Wolf, and secondly, read from the attachments folder inside my mod, a heavy duty spreader XML. Just keep in mind, everything needs to exist to prevent any kind of problem. Now a section that, so far, has been always an exclusive to PC mods. The game can include the famous scripts. One of the controversial ones, one of the most famous scripts that everybody, everybody wants on consoles is the winch. For an example, can be used in any PC mod. This is the place that you use to specify if, any, if there is any extra source files that are going to be needed and read for the mod that you're going to use. In this case, I'm using two Lua examples. Lua as the, um, the pack of scripts, the, the extension of the script used in FarmSim 22, well, in 19 and hopefully in 22. And I'm using two, two very common mods that are the add store category Lua and the change mod title Lua. These two are also very useful in a PC only mod and this is how you load them. You need to have the specializations folder into your mod and then you drop inside the add store category Lua. These are source files that are going to be used in the mod and the change the way the game works. Following that, we're going to use a specialization. We're going to declare an additional specialization to our mod. What specialization is informs them a specialization gave us capabilities, features, and actions to be done. We're going to check them just in the following section. In this case, I'm adding an external, an external <clears throat> an external specialization, one of my favorites on PC mods, which is the add config Lua. This add config Lua adds some features to my mod and allows me to declare specific configurations that are not included in the game. Just keep in mind that these examples are taken from Farming Simulator 19. So far, no Luas are available for FS22. The next section is a very, very, very delicate section. You should not be. Uh, you should not need to modify this section or even to include. Just keep in mind that your mod might not need all of these tags included in this section. But I'm explaining them as best as I can in order for you to have an idea. We're talking about an, a mod desk that it's based and used for the Phoenix Winter Wolf. Therefore, I'm gonna need a specific and new class for my truck because. The main used, the main class used in the game that would be car fillable. This is a this is a code is used in the game. Um, does not have all the all the elements that I need. For an example, I'm using, and you know that I'm using the specialization cover to activate and deactivate the jade break on the Phoenix. Now, the cover specialization is not included in the in the parent car fillable. Therefore, I need to declare an additional class. I need to declare right now a TLX Phoenix Winter that inherits that it's taking everything from car fillable class, but it's adding to it the cover specialization. Therefore, I can use it, code it in the vehicle XML, and get the, get the benefits of it. The next section is a section that is clearly unknown to me, and but it's going to be included in FS22. I really don't know if it was part of FS20 if, if, or if it's 19. I really don't know, but I hope I have I have uh, I want that to be to be useful in 22 in order to reduce slots. How do I read a dependency? Okay, a dependency is gonna tell that this mod depends on another mod. Like for an example, imagine that giants allow us to create what I named here as a as a preview an FS22 82 Studio library. So in this library, I can include the shared items that all my mods are going to have. For an example, a custom light, a custom beacon, 
custom pieces and custom parts that I build uniquely and then all my mods are going to be able to use it. In this case, if that is possible, I wish, I wish and I hope it is, the slot count of every mod will be reduced because a single library will be shared among all my mods and if I create a light for the Phoenix, then I can use this very same light, not two lights, but this light, in several mods. It also be used in case that a mod is released after is, is released after in time and it require it requires a previous mod. For example, you have the slurry spreaders that are attached at the back of a slurry tank. You can specify this, you can create a slurry spreader that requires a slurry tank, a specific slurry tank, and you can set the dependency in here. This slurry spreader requires, depends on you having that specific slurry tank. The next section of the XML, it includes the brands, specific brands, custom brands that are not included in the game. In case that you want to have your specific brand, for example, I can have my TLX brand in the game and I want the TLX brand to appear in the store. I can declare the name TLX, the title TLX, and then assign an image to it. This one is specifically going to read the image from my mod and it's going to read store TLX brand. So this logo is going to appear as the brand TLX in the store. I've actually declared another one that it's Winter Wolf. The title is going to be, it's going to combine capital and regular letters, spaces. The, the name cannot include any of that, but the title can actually be Rich Text. And actually is going to display a Winter Wolf brand. In this case, this is the brand of the new tires of the TLX Winter Wolf. So you are able to select the Winter Wolf brand in the store. We can also declare now brand colors. For an example, I have, you know that I have my home palette of colors. I can select and choose declare now the winter wolf color and assign here a color. Therefore, when I code my colors in my truck, I don't need, I don't need to type anymore all these values. I can use just winter wolf and get done with it. The Winter Wolf has two types of colors. He has a dark one and a light one. This is the basic light one and this is the dark one. You can name it as you want it, but in here just add it a one and the darker variation of that color. One of the very useful sections here are the joint types. The game has his own joint types. You have semi-trailer, three-point, trailer, trailer high, trailer low, a lot of attachments. Skid stairs, front loaders, wheel loaders, all those have their own attacher. Now, in case that you want or you need to specify a special joint, you can declare your, your unique joint type here to be used inside this mod. In this case, I'm declaring the 82's joint winter and the 82 joint winter plow because with these attachments in place specific actions happen on my mod that shouldn't happen on other mods last but not least and as a new a new feature of the mod desk in fs22 we have the feature store packs you've checked on, on videos online live streams reviews of the game already that you can actually have a store pack that is dedicated for a specific task. So we are going to be using those very actively because for an example, if you want to go and check 82's uh, bailing, I'm, I'm able to create a store pack that it's 82 bailing mods. Then inside the bailing, you will, fi you will find goosenecks, you might find a truck, you might find uh, implement or anything that is related to bailing with 82 studio mods. In this case, I have created a TLX winter pack with the T named the TLX winter wolf pack and with a winter wolf pack image. Now it means that if you go to the store and you select the TLX winter pack, even though we have three different mods, in this case it's gonna we're gonna have a snowplow, we're gonna have a snow spreader, a salt spreader, and we are going to have also a truck. In the store, those are different categories. 
they also have different brands. We have the Winter Wolf brand as 82 vehicles. We have the snow, uh, the snow plow, the heavy duty V plow that is going to be an 82 stool. And we also have the salt spreader that is going to be an 82's attachment. So we have three brands and not a single place to display them at once. Store packs allow that to happen. I can separate and I can join them back together as a store pack. Therefore, you go to TLX Winter Pack and you're going to see in one single place the Winter Wolf Pack. It's going to be the TLX Phoenix Winter Wolf, the Salt Spreader, and the Heavy Duty V Plow. Having said that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any doubts, comments, or things that you want to know about what this has been explained on the mod desk, please let me know in the comment section below, and I will be happy to reply to you. If I don't know the answer, you will wait until we know it. If I know the answer, I'll make sure you get your response. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and see you in the next video. Vehicles XML.